Hey guys, welcome back. I am beyond excited for today's tutorial because every year when I'm Googling fall makeup inspiration, I always run across this image, whether it be on Google or Pinterest. I think it seriously has to be like the most pinned makeup look for fall out there. Um, I always run across this image. I think I have one more. This case is so cute. I'll link my case in the description box below because I know you guys will probably ask. Here's another one of that same makeup look. And I think what makes it such a perfect fall makeup look is that it is completely matte. The eyes are matte, the lips are matte, the skin is matte, everything is matte. Honestly, the hardest part of this look is finding the perfect shade of plum lipstick that she has on. And I went through a gazillion lipsticks. I mean, my arm looks horrible <laughs> because I swatched so many lipsticks trying to find the perfect shade of plum for you guys. So I did all the hard work. Everything else in this look is pretty easy. So if you guys are interested and want to see how I created it, keep on watching. To get the look of porcelain smooth skin, I'm going to start by using the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer Smoothing Primer. This has a heavy silicone base, which I tend to avoid in my primers because you never know if they're going to mix well with your foundation or not. But because the foundation is also from Makeup Forever, I was okay with it. I knew that they would mix well together. And this foundation has a semi-matte, really natural finish, which is great for someone like me who doesn't want to be overly matte and also has skin that's more towards the dry side. You guys know the drill. I'm gonna go ahead and correct the inner corners of my eyes so that they don't show up dark when I conceal them later on. And then to conceal and highlight, I'm gonna be using Tarte's Shape Tape. I'm also gonna use this concealer on the lids as an eyeshadow primer. And then after that, if there are any blemishes or imperfections that are still showing through, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover them up using the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Concealer. To set the areas that I have highlighted, I always like using a translucent powder to make sure that I don't accidentally darken them up with any other powder because I definitely like using another powder on the rest of my skin because the translucent powder tends to make me look a little dry at times. So to set the rest of my face, I'm going to be using my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Powder and this awesome Kabuki brush from the Nicole Concilio brush set that she did with Tarte Cosmetics. All of the brushes are so beautiful. I love that they're so shiny and gold, but this Kabuki brush is amazing for foundation and also for setting with powder. After that, I'm going to be bronzing using the new Multitasking Perfecting Powder by Becca. I did try to use one of the lighter shades to set my foundation and I found that it just stuck to the foundation. It did not look cute whatsoever, but the darker shades work amazing as bronzer and contouring powders. And then to further chisel my cheekbones, I'm going to be using the Sculpting Powder by Kevin O'Quan, just on the cheekbones and the sides of the nose as well. I felt like the cheeks needed to be chiseled out a little more, so I'm just taking that same translucent powder I was using earlier and a kabuki brush to define the contour. So I'm going in with a good amount and just laying it right underneath where I contoured with the sculpting powder. I'm gonna let it sit for a bit while I work on my brows and then I'm gonna come back and brush it off. So I'm just combing through my brows with Gamey Brow by Benefit first and then filling them in with my Anastasia Brow Waves in the shade Soft Brown this time, not Medium Brown only because I ran out of medium brown and I'm going back and dusting off that powder. When working on the eyes, I was sort of all over the place because like I mentioned earlier, I hadn't practiced this look. This was my first time doing it, so I wasn't sure what shadows I would be using, but I started off with this Makeup Forever Nine Artist eyeshadow palette. I believe it's palette number four and I'm first going in with this bone colored eyeshadow and I'm sweeping that all across the entire lid, brow bone, everywhere, even the inner corner. And then I picked up this transition shade. This is like a really soft, cool toned brown and I'm applying that to the crease and also the lower lash line. This is gonna help with blending of the darker eyeshadow. And then to create that really smoky effect, I decided to use this eyeshadow from Makeup Store. It's their micro eyeshadow in the shade Deadly. I just thought it was the perfect color, but 
afterwards it was looking a little too gray so I am going to go in with another color. So I'm just applying this to the crease and just really really smoking it out. And then to add a little more of a brown tone to the eye look, I'm going in with Mocha Eyeshadow from Makeup Geek. I'm staying true to the original image and adding a winged liner. I feel like it's been a hot minute since I've done a winged liner. And I'm using the Perversion Liquid Pen Liner from Urban Decay. I've been loving liquid liners or the ones that come in a pen form more so than a gel liner lately. And then for lashes, these are my new favorite. They're the Urban Lash from Urban Decay. They're brand new, they just came out with them. They look so natural, so gorgeous, and they're so easy to apply. I still have to do a tutorial on how to apply individual lashes. I have an old one which I will link in this video for you guys in the meantime. From there, I'm tight lining. This is especially important when wearing false lashes because it disguises them a little better and fills in that gap between the waterline and the false lashes. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't like being completely matte so I'm cheating here and lightly dusting the Celestial Powder in Candlelight by Kevin O'Quan across the high points of my face. This isn't too intense so it's perfect to add a bit of a highlight without being obvious that you added one. And for blush, I'm using this one from the Zoeva Nude Spectrum Blush Palette. It's perfect because it is more towards the dusty side. It doesn't have a strong brassy tone, which matches the one that the model had on in the original image. And then I'm just giving myself a spritz of Fix Plus to make everything look really natural on the skin. And to finish off the eyes, I'm going in with the new Ciate Wonder One Mascara. This actually reminds me a lot of the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. It's really good. And for the lips, I wanted to add some dimension. Like I mentioned, the lip looked darker and lighter in certain areas. So I'm using a darker lip liner on the edges of the lips. And then I'm filling it in with Don't Be A Plum Plum. Don't actually know what that means by Wet n Wild. And then I felt like the eyes were lacking a little something, so I'm going back in with Mocha Eyeshadow from Makeup Geek and intensifying the eye look. And with that done, that completes the look. I yet again forgot to record an outro, but before you guys head out, make sure to check the description box if you want to see the credits for the original image because thanks to Instagram, I finally found out who was the artist that created this stunning look. It was Makeup by Liz, who I had actually been following for a long time, so it was so exciting to see that she was the one who created it. So definitely check that out. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I see you in the next one. Bye guys! <laughs>